meatballs are even more juicy with this ingredient. Big thanks to Napoleon Grills for sponsoring this episode. Real tasty meatballs are not made in a pan. They're made using this. And to cook on this, you're going to need that. This is the Napoleon Prestige Pro 500. But of course, meatballs are not going to taste better by just putting it on the gas grill. No, I'm going to transform this into an ancient cooking device. First, I'm going to take out the grill grates. Then I'm going to remove the flavorizer bars, put in a charcoal tray. And now I transform my gas grill into a charcoal grill. And the reason that I'm starting with this in the recipe is because of the source of charcoal that I chose. I'm gonna use sustainable coconut briquettes. And the sustainable whole thing is fantastic and all, but it's not the reason why I chose it. Because it has a slow burn up to eight hours and this stuff is really special. This is almost like the stuff that they use in Japan. Almost the same characteristics. This gives off such a gradual heat that it's perfect to cook meatballs with. So let's load up that grill. Now all I need to do is fire up the grill. And now with the gas, I'm going to start up these briquettes. Because there's one thing about these briquettes that makes them a little bit difficult to control. And that's getting them lit up. But with the gas fire underneath, it's a piece of cake. While the barbecue is warming up, we're going to focus on the meat from the meatballs. Meatballs. More specifically, I'm focusing on the best meatball recipes. And historically, the best meatballs is made in Arab-speaking countries. I know. My mother and my grandmother make amazing meatballs. They're absolutely fantastic. However, the meatballs that my mother and grandmother make are good, but they can be so much more. And in the Arab countries, they refined the process so much, they fine-tuned it and tweaked it and turned it into an art form until they had the perfect recipe. Kufte, kufte. We say kofte, but it's kufte, I think. There's like a... Like that. And how did they do it? Well, they take 75% of ground beef and they add 25% of lamb. Boom. It's too easy. They already won. They just added lamb. And lamb itself in meat makes your meatball so much better. Now, of course, this is not going to be it. We're going to need to season it. We're going to need it to stick together. So we're going to add the rest of the ingredients, starting with the most obvious. And the first one is breadcrumbs. And the second ones are eggs. I'm adding about 200 grams of breadcrumbs into two kilograms of meat is going to help the meat stick. And then you're going to need some glue. One egg per kilogram is more than enough. This is 30 grams of parsley, which I'm going to chop fine using my forged katai chef's knife. I'm just going to chop it up and because it has such a large surface, you're going to need to move the knife around from a height all the way down, chopping it and pushing it down to the board. But if you have a beautiful edge on your knife like this, it's going to get dull. Let me show you what just happened. It's still rather sharp, not disappointing, but as you can see, it has some difficulty getting through the paper. Not bad, but could be better. If you have one of these, which is not a honing rod, this is a sharpening rod. They say it's laced with diamond fragments. I don't know, I don't really believe things like that. This is just a hard material that will help you sharpen your knife instantly. Though aside from the honing, you're gonna sharpen it a little bit, straighten the edges, and then what I like to do is go over the cutting board, the edge of the cutting board, and then just shave off the edge. It's just like with a letter. You're just going to shave off the edges, making it even sharper. And now we're back in full effect. But on You see, it's just going to slice through like butter. Can I have my script back? Yeah, this is Morrison's. Is a oh, I, I need it. The parsley gets added. I'm also going to add about three tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil, two tablespoons of red wine vinegar, and now I'm going to need to season the meatballs. So I'm going to show you my recipe for kufte seasoning. It starts with two tablespoons of salt, two tablespoons of paprika powder, a teaspoon of chili powder, a teaspoon of cumin, a teaspoon of ground pepper, a teaspoon of garlic powder, a teaspoon of coriander powder, a teaspoon of nutmeg powder, a teaspoon of thyme powder, and a teaspoon of dried mint. Mix it all up, and that's how you make the kufte spice mix. 
I'm gonna add about four tablespoons worth of this seasoning. And now it's time we start mixing this up. And yes, we gotta do it by hand. It's mandatory. So far I created a standard meatball mix. Of course with kufta spices which make it very very tasty, but there is still no magic ingredient. The magic ingredient is... That's right! Onions! Just look at the consistency that I have in this meat bowl right here. Let me turn this into a bowl. And let me open it up for you. See how nice and sticky that is? It tears a little bit. But just wait until I added the onions. And that's what you get. Look, beautifully shredded onion. It is almost torn. It's not diced, it is shredded, which means it's gonna be light to digest. You don't have to bite into it, but it's gonna give you loads and loads of flavor. It's going to tenderize the meatball and it's gonna keep it nice and moist. This needs to be mixed in with the minced meat. Now let's roll another bowl and then again, take a look at the consistency. You see, it's hard to tear, but if it tears, it shreds much finer. And you get these little chunks of onion. It gets more sticky, it becomes more juicy. And that's the magic ingredient that the Arab-based recipes have been making the best meatballs with ever. Forever and ever. Sorry, Grandma. I love your meatballs. I love them to death, but we gotta give it to the kefta. All right, there we have a bowl a little larger than a golf ball size. Normally, I recommend golf balls, perfect size for juicy and crunchy exterior. But now, since this is a kufte, we're going to take three fingers, press this flat, and now we have a flat meat bowl, perfect for the grill. I'm gonna do a couple more. With the kufte now ready, it's time to check back on the grill. And as you can see, the sustainable coconut briquettes are lit up and ready to go. But the first thing that I need to do is take out a little bit of that heat by turning off the gas grill and just let the charcoal do its job. I'm just gonna slide the grill grates over. I'm gonna take a piece of paper towel with a little bit of olive oil on top. Make sure that my grill grates are non-stick because especially with minced meat, the likeliness of the food sticking to the grill grate is very big. And that's why you just gotta love these stainless steel grill grates. And one season, they're absolutely non-stick. If you take a look at this and you've been wondering all this time why I pressed it flat with my fingers, it's because now we enlarged the surface. This is also something that in the air recipes, they just make these ugly little parts on your meatballs just to make them taste better. It's an art form. Now let's get these on and start grilling. And you can hear that light sizzle. It's not very intense. We're not getting any flare ups, but we're just getting that really nice searing sound. If you could just smell this, man. <laughs> it's lunchtime here now. I'm so hungry. I'm so glad I don't have any neighbors. Otherwise it would just be here, especially now with everybody working from home. It will be really, really terrible. Neighbors jumping the fence, terrible. Now they know that I already tasted one. <laughs> I, I'm just gonna continue. Like you saw a little bit of flames, a little bit of flare ups coming, but because of the charcoal, it's not getting out of hand. It's quite normal for the fat to render down, drip onto the charcoal and cause a little bit of flare up. But as you can see here, it's not going any further. The fat's melting not further. It's not doing any damage to our kufte. They're absolutely perfect as you can see. Perfectly cooked, nice and brown. I'm just gonna keep loading on the barbecue with more kufta because we got so much more to do. And I'm gonna show you later on how juicy this meatball is and how much better it is compared to anything else. Let's see the secret. Oh, yo, yo. <laughs> This is the secret. This is why these meatballs are so much better than any other meatballs. All the juices from the onion, the fat that render down from the meat, it is so freaking amazing. This is one juicy, tasty meatball. And if we take another look, we can see the Mjord effect on the outside, the flavor of the charcoal grilling brought on loads and loads of color. This stuff is so amazing. It is the perfect meatball and you need to try this recipe. And all you need to remember is shredded onion is the magic 
key to happiness. We're gonna make a plate, we're gonna do this properly. And the kufta seasoning is gonna go over my fries, as a fry seasoning, kufta onto the plate. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Just wondering how many I could fit on this plate. I want to eat the whole plate and have it just loaded up with more and more and more. Eyes are a little bit bigger than my stomach, but look at that. That is a proud moment. The best meatballs in the world with a side of fries and some lettuce. I think after you ate this and then you go on to the fries and then that's why I have it in this order. I start on this side, then if I'm not filled up yet, I have some fries and if I don't fill by the fries, I can have some veggies. Now without further ado, you know what's inside. The magic is here. Let's give this a try. Oh, it's so juicy. <laughs> this is officially the juiciest meatball of all. I do not care if you change the season, but if you keep the onion in and you grill it over charcoal, then you hit the money. So good.